Well, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, I wanna to answer a question that we've been asked a lot recently, and that is how do we keep our Great Pyrenees from trying to escape our property? What kind of fencing do we use? Um, you know, what do we do to keep them from escaping? And I also wanna share with you four things that we wish we knew about fencing for Great Pyrenees. When we brought Mac and Mabel home for the first time, our first Great Pyrenees that we ever had, I'll admit, we weren't very prepared for it. See, we brought them home as puppies and they were still very small. And this property that we live on here, the original fence was the four foot welded wire build fence with that you know, strand of barbed wire running along the top. And I thought for sure that would be enough to keep them contained. But they grew so quick and uh, you know, got real big. And I still thought honestly that it was gonna contain them. But then one night, just a couple days before the 4th of July, and this was just a few years ago, I came home from work that night, real late at night, and uh, I noticed that one of the neighbors was popping fireworks right up the street. And I came home and I went out to check on the dogs and they weren't in the yard. And I just had that eerie silence, just that, that moment where I realized that they weren't there. And we found that they had jumped that fence, the four foot with the barbed wire on top. They jumped, they both jumped it. And we actually found them uh, they went through the woods behind our property and found their way all the way to a highway and we were so lucky that we ended up finding them safe. They didn't get hit by a car, uh, but that definitely scared us and that started honestly a battle back and forth trying to keep them contained in our yard. So the first thing that we wish we knew about fencing to keep our Great Pyrenees on our property is that Great Pyrenees were bred to roam. That's right, they, by instinct, they don't, uh, they don't really respect boundaries. They were bred to roam. You see, originally these dogs were bred to be out uh, on the mountains, in the mountains with their, with their flock for weeks on end without any human interaction. Nobody telling them where to go or where to stay, and they would just follow their flock wherever the flock went. They were there with them to guard them. So because of that, these dogs do not see, you know, your acreage of property as their territory. They see beyond that. So it takes a little bit of uh, training and uh, setting firm boundaries to show them that this is where they need to stay. The second thing we wish we knew about fencing to keep our Great Pyrenees contained on our property is that Great Pyrenees can jump a lot higher than you would expect. You know, Great Pyrenees are very big dogs, are very heavy. Mac weighs in at like 120 pounds, so you would think that he's not able to jump and clear a four or five foot fence, but you would be wrong. We found out the hard way that Mac can basically jump, our, our big boy, Mac, he can basically jump any fence that he's able to jump and put his paws on top of. If he can do that, he's then able to pull himself up and climb over that fence and clear it pretty much with ease. So when we learned that, it, it kind of started a battle between me and him. I realized I needed to firm up our fencing around our property to keep them safe, to keep them contained. So he jumped the four foot fence. So I went out and I bought some more welded wire fencing, some five foot fencing. I thought for sure he wouldn't be able to jump five feet because he barely jumped four feet it seemed. So I went out and put all the hard work and effort into increasing our fence to five foot and guess what? The next day he jumped the five foot fence as well. I wasn't laughing then if I can be honest. But after that we started looking into other options, other ways to keep Mac from jumping a five foot fence and I found a solution called coyote rollers and you can google that you can look it up but it's basically like a way that you put like a pipe or a roller across the very top of your fence that way when they do jump and try to put their paws up there they kind of roll off of it and i thought about it but you know we have um, acres of land here it wouldn't really be that easy for me to put coyote rollers across our entire fence it just wouldn't happen it wouldn't work that way for us so 
Instead, I thought, well, he jumped a four foot fence. He jumped a five foot fence. Surely he cannot jump an eight foot fence. So we increased our, our fence height to eight foot all the way around. I brought a buddy out to weld uh, some rebar onto our existing T-posts. And I went and bought more fencing and put it around the top of our perimeter fencing line. And I increased it all the way to eight foot tall, all the way around. Since Mac was able to jump the five foot fence, I thought for sure he wouldn't be able to jump the eight foot fence. And I was right, he was not able to jump it. But that leads me to the third thing that we wish we knew about fencing to keep our Great Pyrenees contained. And that's that Great Pyrenees are strong enough to rip through a welded wire fence. So he didn't jump it this time, but within a day of me putting in, again, all that hard work and effort, increasing the height of the fence to eight foot, a day later, he ripped through. Just a hole just barely big enough for his, him to fit through. He ripped through the fence and got out again. And the fourth thing that we wish we knew about fencing to keep our Great Pyrenees contained is that Great Pyrenees can and will dig up underneath the fence to get out. Now ours haven't actually done this. They have not escaped underneath the fence just yet, but from the very beginning, we stacked a whole bunch of rocks along the fence line, all the way around the perimeter of the fence line to prevent them from trying to dig out. And so far, fingers crossed, it has worked. They have not dug out but I always keep an eye on the, the perimeter line of the fence make sure that they're not trying to move rocks away from it uh, but so far it's working hey if you're enjoying this video would you consider hitting that subscribe button you know only about 10% of our viewers subscribe to our channel and I'd like to grow that we really appreciate the love and support Now the fencing solution that we have found that works for us to keep our Great Pyrenees from escaping our property is electric fencing. We were very hesitant to go that route and put a hot wire up, an electric fence, you know, an electric wire on the fence line uh, because we've got five kids and we didn't want one of the kids getting zapped and getting hurt. But uh, we, we finally went that route and we found that that's what works best. You see, we needed Mac to respect the fence the, the property boundaries. Uh, he had already jumped the fence and now he had torn through the fence. We needed to keep him away from the fence. So I, I lined the entire fence line with two strands of electric fencing, one high and one low. And let me tell you something, it only took him getting zapped. It only took Mac getting zapped like two or three times. And now he won't even come uh, up but a couple feet from the fence. So he'll, if there's something on the other side of the fence, he'll run and bark at it through the fence, but he doesn't touch the fence anymore. And that's what we needed him to do. We needed him to respect the boundaries of the fence line so we could keep him safe. I didn't want him jumping the fence again and find him on the side of the road after getting hit by a car. That would be very bad. I didn't want that to happen. Now this video isn't really gonna be a how to put up an electric fence or how to put up welded wire fencing. I'm not working on a project like that right now. I might move our fencing a little bit further out into our property to give the animals more space soon. And if I do that, I'll include a video very soon on how to put up fencing like that. But for now, I just wanna show you some of the components of the fencing that we put up should you uh, just be getting started on your own property, not really know what to do or, or what type of things you might need to keep your animals contained. Here's the things that we've used. This right here is the electric fence controller. This is what actually puts the current out onto the electric fence. And you can see we've got it hooked up uh, over by the gate that we walk through to get in with the animals. And the way that I hooked it up was I put like a little uh, power block, a little extension cord right here, clearly marked on and off. That way, as you're walking in, we, we you know, we trained, we, we told our kids that as you're walking in through the gate, you need to come over here and make sure that the fence is off before you go in. You know, one of our kids, I would say at this point, they've all been probably zapped at least once. 
and uh, they learn their lesson. They learn to make sure that that fence is off before they go in. Now I'll put links in the description of this video down below, put links of all the, the items that I'm gonna talk about that we use to put up the fence. Uh, that way you can go and find where you can buy them for yourself. But uh, right here, this is what's called welded wire fencing. And this is five foot tall welded wire fencing. It's just, you can get it at Tractor Supply. You can also even order it on Amazon. Again, the links are in the description down below. And listen, this isn't an exhaustive guide because every single fencing project is very unique and different. So uh, you're gonna have to get what works for you. But that's the, that's the fencing right there. You can also see we've got the electric wire going across right here and I've got it off. That's why I'm not getting zapped right now. But then you need these, what are called uh, electric fence isolators. This is what holds it away from the fence because it can't get grounded by the fence or else uh, it won't work. So it's gotta be away from the fence. The plastic keeps it away from the fence like that. You need these T-posts if you're gonna do this style of fencing. You need a T-post, uh, a whole bunch of T-posts about eight to 10 feet apart um, every eight to ten feet let's see what else here's a few more of the tools and things that you would need if you're going to put up a welded wire fence uh, as well as the electric line the hot wire going along the top uh, when you put up the welded wire fence you can't just put it up and just roll it out you actually have to stretch it or else it's not going to be very strong so you have to get what's called a field fence pull bar that way you can you can put it in there you can stretch it if you need uh, instructions on how to do that. I'm sure you can find a video online or I'll link to one above after I've done one here on this channel. You also need the T-post hammer uh, to drive those T-posts into the ground. Um, let's see. You also, here's some of the, the electric fence wire that you would string up. The come-alongs help to, to stretch the, the fence with the, the stretch bar. Uh, here's those, the T-posts, electric fence uh, isolators these are what you use to uh, attach the fence to the t-post these uh, t-post clips are what they called and you'll need a, a fork this fork tool to put them on to the t-post to connect the fence to the t-post so again there's kind of a lot that goes into putting up a fence like that a lot of tools a lot of parts and things that you need but again I put the, all the links down in the description below to help you out see all the different things you might need to do that See if we got any eggs today. Hey chickens. Hey chickens. Yeah, we got a bunch of them. Let's see if there's any in the other boxes. Alright, we got four in here. Two. Well, no, you're not getting any. We've got another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we got 11 eggs today. That's awesome. That is it for today's video we sure hope that you enjoyed it and if you did make sure you hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss the next time that we post a video and if you want an inside scoop before youtube make sure you follow us on instagram at willow ridge acres we'll see you again next time